Hello and welcome to this introductory video about the course Supporting Autistic Members of Staff. This course has been developed as a collaboration between Employment Autism and the National Association of Disability Practitioners, the NADP. It builds on research undertaken at London South Bank University by Professor Nikki Martin and her team. The objectives that we've identified for this introductory video include providing you with a brief theorised overview of autism, informed by the views of autistic people, which is very important, and focusing specifically on autistic people in the workplace. We want you to develop an understanding of autistic identity and to start to think about ways in which you can be effective in working with autistic people in your particular role and in your particular context. This theme will be developed throughout the training course as you learn more about autism and its advantages and challenges in the workplace. My name is Hilary Fertig. I've worked in various roles with neurodivergent and learning disabled adults and children for over 30 years as a part of a broad portfolio career. I'd also like to introduce Lynn Wilson. Lynn has been involved with lecturing in critical disability studies. She's worked in disability support in, in colleges and teaching and in research within universities since 2001. She is autistic and dyslexic. She has also been involved in disability research for her own educational director, doctorate and on behalf of the NADP, who work with members of staff who support disabled students and staff at colleges and universities. The content that you'll be engaging with comes from a research project with Nick, which Professor Nicola Martin led with autistic researchers looking at effective mentoring with autistic adults. Nikki is an important contributor to this course and we have consulted her throughout its development. Autism is lifelong, but we need to remember that everyone, including autistic people, change and develop over time. Many autistic people thrive in the workplace under the right circumstances. Adults in the workplace face a whole series of new challenges which they may not have met in school, college or university. Our objective is to help them overcome barriers that they might encounter. And one of the ways to do that is for us, for us to have an empathic understanding of autism. Autistic people may experience the sensory world, world with heightened sensitivity and that's incredibly important when you think about some work environments, such as noisy and crowded canteens or shared offices, which can be a sensory nightmare. Being autistic is often a fundamental aspect of someone's identity, and it's really important to meet people where they are in relation to how they feel about their autism. Some people embrace it, some people don't embrace it, and there are many people between those two poles. Autism is a broad spectrum. There are lots of aspects of autism that many autistic people share, but they all experience it differently. And this can depend on the sort of person they are in general and is also influenced by past experiences and upbringing, for example. Due to this, autistic people need different levels and types of support. You may have heard of the label homogeneity by impairment. impairment. One reaction could be, oh, he's autistic, he must need this, the autism package. It doesn't work like that. You're working with individual people. There may be similar underlying characteristics shared by autistic people, but everyone has their own individual personalities and life experiences. There are lots of strengths associated with autism, which are conducive to thriving in employment under the right circumstances. Barriers to thriving are often socially constructed and its awareness of these barriers and how they manifest themselves and how they impact on the individual, which are really important for you to consider if you are supporting someone in the workplace. That is a very fast and very concise summary, and you'll be able to spend more time considering these aspects of autism throughout the course. Gender and sexuality are important aspects to consider. There are differing rates of diagnosis between males and females, and there's a real gender divide. Although more women are being diagnosed with autism in recent years, there's still a lot of debate about whether there is actually a higher rate of autism in men, or whether the diagnostic criteria have led to men, more men and boys being identified. In terms of sexual identity and sexual orientation, a higher percentage of the autistic population will identify as gay, trans or a non-binary person. This is crucial to a sense of sense of self. 
Autistic people have reported that some people struggle to accept more than one identity. So while being autistic is fine, being autistic and gay is more difficult for people to accept. We cover more about intersectionality and the impact of individuals' diverse life experiences later in the course. Social stigma is really important in terms of identity. This is the notion of othering. Sometimes in society or groups, there is a specific, specific idea of the way you're supposed to be. If you don't conform to this idea or, or are different in one or many ways, then you may be separated or excluded from this group. Potentially, you become the other. To be other, to be different, may also be considered to be troublesome or problematic. We have to be really careful that we are not making generalisations. There's no such thing as an autistic group of people who all behave in the same way. And there's no such thing as a non-autistic group of people who all behave in the same way and are sort of better in some bizarre way. None of that is real and those ideas have no place in our thinking. This training is very much informed by the views of autistic people. So we have to be aware that it's autistic people that have talked to us about social stigma in our research. We have to believe them. Dr. Damien Milton was part of the pro this project which underpins this training course. And he's written a lot about masking, passing and disabilism. Passing or masking means pretending to be someone else in order to fit in. And that causes the person a great deal of stress. This is covered in more detail later in the course. Disabilism is a form of social imp uh, oppression where restrictions are put on the activities of people. This undermines their psycho-emotional well-being. For example, a new recruit in the workplace was really upset to learn that her, co her colleagues had all been out to a bar on Friday night. When she asked why she had not been invited, they said that she knew she was autistic, they knew she was autistic, and so that she would not have liked the noisy bar. These colleagues made an assumption based on a stereotype, which may not have reflected the preferences of their new colleague. They should have invited her to join them and described the venue, including outlining their concerns to ensure that she was able to make her own decision on attendance. Depending on that conversation, they could have chosen to meet elsewhere or met at a quieter place first and let her choose whether to go to the bar with them later. There would have been many routes for the group to choose which actively included the new employee. It's up to everyone to be open minded to inclusion and accommodate diversity. Some people embrace their identity as an autistic person or their identity as a disabled person. Other people don't want to embrace this identity and consequently they will avoid associating with, associating with services which are badged for autistic or disabled people. That in many ways shouldn't matter in terms of accessing the support that they require because they're entitled to every service in the workplace that has to offer like any other employee. Diagnosis may be necessary to access some services, such as those provided by the UK government funded access to work scheme. But this can be a barrier in itself. First, because people might not want a diagnosis as they're not comfortable with an autistic di identity. And because adult diagnostic services and post diagnostic support are really scarce, really hard to come by and potentially very expensive. There were different views on diagnosis from Professor Martin's research. One person said, a diagnosis would have helped, so I didn't feel my lack of social skills was a deficit of mine. That is self-explanatory. But on the other hand, another person said, having a diagnosis means as an adult, you feel like you can never actually participate normally in everything with everyone else. So a diagnosis is not a neutral event. Telling an employer about a diagnosis or condition is a really difficult decision. It may lead to understanding by the employer and the implementation of adjustments, which helps an employee to perform, to perform at the best in the role. It also ensures legal protection in the workplace if the employer is aware of a diagnosis. However, there are reports of discrimination on disclosure. It is up to each individual to decide who to tell and when, and this information should be kept strictly confidential unless permission is given to tell others. This video has provided just a short introduction to autism in the workplace. So what happens next? On this course, we will encourage you to think about the points we've made in relation to your own role. Are you a manager supporting an autistic employee? 
Are you a colleague voluntarily supporting a friend? Are you an official mentor? It will be different for all of you. There's much more material to engage with as you work through the course, and we would encourage you to do as many of the independent tasks as you feel necessary in order to enhance, enhance your learning and understanding. Towards the end of the course is another more in-depth video and then a short written task for you to complete, on the successful completion of which you will receive the CPD points. To consolidate your learning, we will invite you to participate in an online live discussion with an expert panel to ask any questions that you have and further, and further enhance your knowledge. Thank you for watching.